Hi, my name is Nana. Um, I just wanted to film this and just speak about some truths um, about, you know, new age spirituality and basically how I got tricked <laughs> by the devil um, into inadvertently worshiping him instead of Jesus. And um, I believe it will help people because a lot of people are in a similar predicament, especially a lot of Christians who, you know, are very worldly. Um, so I just wanted to give my testimony and uh, try to be as thorough as possible. Um, and I have notes down here because it's a lot. Um, I think we should start off with a prayer, <laughs> you know, um, and just a really quick prayer. We just wanna say, you know, thank you God for giving us this beautiful day. Thank you, Lord, for giving us life, giving life abundantly, Lord. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins um, and taking us back no matter what, as long as we repent, Lord. We, we are so grateful for um, you giving us the Holy Spirit. And please, Holy Spirit, move me, talk through me. Um, and as I stumble, pick me up and help me <laughs> to get through this testimony, Lord. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. Um, <laughs> so... Basically, um, I grew up Christian. Um, grew up Christian. I I went back and forth from New York to Ghana for the first six years of my life. Um, when I lived in Ghana, I lived with my cousins, and we went to church every Sunday. Church was a very big part of our lives. It was something we did no matter what. Um, we went to a Catholic school. It was just super fun. And then um, around age ten, I moved to New York. My parents were separated. So I moved to New York and I lived with my stepmom and my uh, half siblings and my dad. And so um, I believe my stepmom was Catholic at one time and then Christian. And I remember us going to church um, every once in a while, especially for the holidays, you know. But that house was, it was, it was a hard uh, adjustment, you know, moving from. Ghana, where everybody's very respectful, especially to your elders. And I remember going to school, I was 10 years old in the uh, fifth grade, and it was a reality check. It was, I remember the, this little girl yelling at my dog, <laughs> yelling at um, the teachers, and it was just a, a huge reality check to me. I was just like, what is happening? It was nothing like I ever experienced growing up in Ghana. Um, anyway, so. Um, yeah, so I remember growing up in that house, it was, it was a lot of anger, it was a lot of, um, yelling and, um, abusive language and, um, there was a big disconnection between myself and my step family, of course, and I just felt out of place, um, and I lived there from age 10 to 17, I got kicked out. <laughs> That's another story. Um, but I just remember growing up and from age like 12, I started getting sleep paralysis. And really, really bad sleep paralysis. I honestly felt like I was being haunted. Like I I would hear things in my sleep paralysis. I would, um, sorry my dog. I would hear things in my sleep paralysis. I would uh, feel like somebody is laying on top of my chest and I couldn't breathe. Um, and I even remember at that age, just praying, 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 and then eventually it will let me go. Um, but anyway, so at 17, I, I moved with my mom, and um, my mom ended up moving to America for her own reasons and ended up staying. And so my mom, even though you know she's Christian, we weren't going to church, we were just kind of like doing our own thing. I have a sister and two brothers from my mom's side. And so everything was kind of like, okay, life was hard, but you know, we just like got through it. My parents were divorced, so my dad wasn't really involved with my mom's kids. I only knew him because I lived with him from that age of 10 to 17, 16, 17. Um, so anyway, I went to school by God's grace. Oh my God, 
it was hard. I remember even like, I remember one time in Ghana, I was like seven years old actually. And um, you know, my aunt, I was staying with my aunt and my cousins and this man came and visited my aunt and um, she, was, she, was, she was doing business with him. And I remember I came into like their little business meeting in the living room and I was just demanding, you know, for her to help me to find my shoes or something like that. And you know, she just kind of dismissed me. So I went outside and I was sulking because I couldn't find my shoes that I that my mom bought me from America. So it was very important to me. And <laughs> and um, eventually, this man comes out of you know my aunt's house where we lived. And he comes up right to me. All of my other cousins they weren't there with me, and he says to me, "Oh, your aunt gave me money to buy you some shoes." And I remember being seven years old and thinking, okay, give me the money. <laughs> you know, I could buy my shoes. And he was very adamant. He was like, no, you have to come with me. Um, I, um, I will help you buy the shoes. And it was so weird. And I know God was with me because as a child, I shouldn't have been so smart. And I basically was like, no, I'm not going with you. Give me the money and I will buy the shoes. And obviously later on in life, I realized that he was trying to kidnap me. And or at least sexually assault me because a lot of uh, that stuff happens a lot actually just all over the world with little girls and little boys um, but by God's good grace um, I was okay but anyway so when I moved with my mom and you know I finished college I um, kind of I thought that I'd get a job right away I have passed my boards and I ended up being the last person out of all my friends to get a job, even though I was the first one to pass my boards. And um, I remember I had this really good friend who was a year ahead of me, and she just kept telling me, "There's no jobs, there's no jobs, there's no jobs." And I was, and this is 2012, um, like the, I think the economy crashed around that time. Yeah, it definitely did. And um, I was telling my mom the same thing: "There was no jobs, there's no jobs." And my mom was just trying to be positive, but I was so adamant. So it kind of just like became my life. And I couldn't find um, a job in my career, which was kind of like weird at that time for me. And I just kind of spiraled. And I um, started to read books about uh, Buddhism. I read the Bible, like cover to cover, but I didn't read it you know, with the Holy Spirit in me. And I know the difference now because when I read certain um, books now like i was reading you know acts the other day and i was like crying the whole time and i remember the first time i read the bible it did not move me i um i thought that there were some great stories you know and i was like wow this is really interesting kind of like reading it like a history book but not really reading it on the level of like a christian would read it or even somebody who was trying to get closer to god would read it it was just kind of factual like oh okay this is cool oh maybe this kind of happened maybe i don't know but it truly didn't move me um and so i started to read about buddhism and um i remember i had netflix and the law of attraction the movie came out and or well, at least it was available so i watched it and that was in 2012 and um, everything changed for me. Um, I was already kind of learning about that mystic side of the world, I guess. And I believe like once I opened up that door, like that's really when my life changed. And at the time, I thought that it was changing for the better. So this was 2012 and I had three main desires. I wanted to find a good job in my career and I wanted um, to get a car because I live in a I live in the city, but it's always nice to have a car. And um, I also wanted a good relationship. I remember that. I, those were the three things that I started to meditate about and <laughs> and um, write my little um, things like I will I will do this and I will do this and writing everything in present tense like the law of attraction tells you to do and had an attitude of gratitude and um, was telling everybody about it because I truly felt better and I felt like you know my friends were so well my one friend was so negative and that was the reason why I couldn't find a job so let me change my attitude and pretty quickly things started to change um, within Within like about a month or maybe two months, I 
was outside smoking a cigarette and I remember just having like I had no desire to smoke cigarettes but I had this nicotine addiction and I, it, none of my parents smoked maybe a couple of my friends smoked but it was so strange but I, I could not quit like I tried quitting couldn't quit but I was outside smoking a cigarette and this pastor comes up to me and he's just like I'm opening up a new church come you know come and so I was like oh maybe I'll go basically went long story short I ended up getting my first job as a um, in my career and <laughs> And I was like, whoa, this works. So then, of course, I started to use it more and more. And um, I wanted a car. And so I would visualize the black car, for whatever reason, a black car. And basically, through the strangest way, I ended up buying a, a, a car from like my stepbrother. And I was just like, wow, this is amazing. And it was a black uh, Mercedes truck ml i got it for like five thousand dollars i was so hype about it um and then i also like met my ex-boyfriend and um he was so hot he was so handsome and i was just like wow this is amazing my life is like completely changing um <laughs> but yeah that's also the time when i was not praying i was just a victim out in the world i didn't understand the consequences of what I was doing. And of course, the more you get into the mystic side of uh, the world, um, like if you're anything like me, I love reading, I love learning, I love studying. So I started to devour as much information. I learned about chakras. I learned about um, like duality and just like all these um, things. And I was really heavy into law of attraction. I kind of almost got into uh, crystals but um, I was attracted to crystals. Like I went to San Francisco with my friends one day and I almost bought like crystals because I remember that they represented each area of your body for um, chakras. And I was like, oh wow, like now if I meditate with the bowl of crystals near me, you know, I'll vibrate higher. Like I don't, I don't even know <laughs> what I was thinking. And um, at that time I also um, ended up going to Thailand with my sister and unbeknownst to me, we ended up going to a lot of shrines, you know, shrines, um, if you know what shrines are, yeah, not a good thing. And I actually ended up getting blessed by a Buddhist monk with some type of water. Um, I went with a group of people and um, it was just a, it was a, you know, I kept saying this is all cultural, this is all cultural. Um, and I also brought home a bunch of items from Thailand um arts artsy stuff like little statue things just a bunch of cute little things that i thought was harmless and um anyway and just kept going down that route of mysticism and so eventually um i ended up seeing a psychic one day accidentally not even accidentally it was all like lined up for me i just didn't understand what i was doing and what i was going to cost how much it was going to cost me um, and she basically told me, oh yeah, you work in healthcare, you're going to meet your husband in three years and you're going to do like these weird things that kind of correlated to me at that time. And she took down my email address. Um, and it was just like, I, I was just out there basically without any protection from the Holy Spirit. I didn't know what I was doing and I repented for everything, but it's still, very hard to discuss sometimes because I feel like I feel like such a bad person not like um, I don't feel guilty because you know this was a huge learning experience for me um, but I feel guilt I feel bad because I told my friends and my family about you know law of attraction and how much it was changing my world um, anyway so um, I remember one day I was reading I was meditating on um, opening up my slow my solar plexus um, you, you know, like the chakra, and just chilling, meditating, and then boom, I, there's this white light that like fills my head or whatever. And um, you know, that type of meditating makes you, um, like you don't judge your thoughts, you just watch what's happening without judgment. So I'm watching and I see a light, a light beam into like straight into my stomach. And you know, I, I kind of like woke up and was just like, whoa, whoa, what was that? You know, and I remember praying, like that was the first time in a lot of years that I actually prayed because I didn't know what I just did, basically. 
And um, after that, went into a dark, dark, dark depression. Broke up with my um, ex, who was just it wasn't it wasn't a godly relationship. There was he wasn't even Christian. He was just we were just all about the flesh, and um, just kind of became a loner. Increased bad habits. Um, you know, and you know, the Bible, you know, says basically have a sober mind, you know, and um, your enemy, the devil, you know, prowls like a, a, a roaring lion for someone to devour and I was being devoured. And at that time of me meditating and praying to God, I was trying to serve two masters with the Bible straight up says you cannot, one man cannot serve two masters, you know. I believe in the West, we believe that we can separate, you know, the meditation, the the, um, the Eastern meditation from, you know, religion, from that type of religion where you could meditate, but you're not like, you don't believe in Buddha. Like you can't do that. You just can't, you know, the same way you can't do yoga and, um, <laughs> and you you know, and separate yoga from that religion. It's on, you just can't. I thought you could, but you can't. Um, anyway, so... I ended up going to a wedding in Ghana in September 2018 and I met a new man and I was like, wow, I remember the psychic said I was going to meet my my husband and I was like obsessed with him. It was really it was really strange how obsessed we kind of got with each other within 3 months, you know, planning a wedding and I learned that um, my mom is from the Ashanti, um, Ashanti tribe and my dad is from the Kweu tribe and um, he was also from the Kweu tribe. And so he was like explaining to me about that tribe because I didn't know anything about it. I just knew my dad wasn't really like hands on with us, his children, you know. Um, and it was just very strange because he, like my uncles and my nephews, they were like, yeah, your dad is so amazing. He gives us so much. And I'm just like, we're struggling, me and my, my mom and my family. So it was just like I had a bad taste in my mouth. But he was explaining that, oh, things have changed, you know, whatever. Yeah, so, um, and I used the word spirit a lot nowadays because I understand that everything is spiritual. Things happen in the spiritual realm before they happen in the natural realm. Um, and it's unfortunate that a lot of people don't know this, especially Christians, because, you know, our fight, you know, is it's not against flesh and blood. It's against, you know, the rulers of this world, the spiritual world, you know, the principalities, the authorities, over this world and they have been here for a millennia they know the rules and they know um, how to get to you basically if you are a Christian you're already in danger because Satan hates Christians and this is coming from a person who honestly didn't even believe in hell I did not believe in hell I did not believe in Satan I kept um, I would kind of rationalize and say well like a lot of people are suffering right now, so you mean to tell me if that you suffer your whole life and you don't know Christ, that you're gonna go to hell and suffer more? You know, it just didn't make sense to me. Um, of course, because I was using, you know, my my mind and not my spiritual eyes, and um, also not reading the Bible or even trying to learn more. Because as I said, I was very spiritual, um, but all of that is gone now. <laughs> um, and so, honestly, what really happened was. Um, after everything was said and done, I got into a real deep depression and couldn't really get out of it after I broke up with my, I mean, my ex broke up with me this time. And, um, and it was because I was aggressive. I was aggressive and I just didn't understand what was my problem. And so I remember when this spirit of depression attached to, um, against me, I was sleeping all the time and just crying and just you know, a sad person and really, really just not eating. And I remember one day I was, um, I went to sleep and I had a dream. And in that dream, at this time, I hadn't spoken to my dad in like two years, um, mostly because of pride. Like I was like, just very prideful. He wasn't reaching out to me. So I was like, I'm not reaching out to you, pride. So, um, <laughs> and in that dream, my mom, who lives in Africa, uh, she lives in Ghana. She came, and we were all, myself and my siblings were in a room. And she came, and she told us, 
she was kind of like beating around the bush. She was just like, you, you know, everybody needs to calm down. And we're all like looking at her. It was very real because this person in the dream had my mom's personality. And she was just like, you know, I'm sorry to tell you, but your dad is dead. And I was like, what happened? And she basically in the dream could not explain it to me. She was like, you know, we just don't know what really happened, but he's dead. He died two weeks ago. And it was just like, but why are you telling us now? <laughs> it was so horrifying. And I remember waking up, my heart, my heart was pounding. I felt nauseous and I, I immediately called my dad. And if you're African, I, I WhatsApp my dad. Um, well, not only Africans use WhatsApp, but anyway, um, he didn't pick up and then I text him and he responded. He told me he was in a place without service and we spoke via text message. I basically, like in my heart forgave him. I just spoke to him, made sure that he was okay. He told me he was okay. It was just very, it was too real of a dream. And I felt the emotions I would have felt if I wouldn't have made peace, basically. Um, and I remember just like, of course, being still depressed. And then one day I was crying and I, I mean, I, obviously God was still watching over me, you know, thank God. And he, he, he just like something in my heart just like stopped me from crying and it said, you know, it's going to be okay. Like, relax. It's not the end of your life. Like, relax. And I felt a sense of peace and it was not for me. I was ready to be sad. And um, it kind of like pushed me to start reading more. And at that time, I had a daily devotional gifted to me by somebody. And I started to read that and, you know, truly you know, embracing the words from the verses as, as well as the um, the pastor's um, definition, not definition, but what he's explaining about that verse. And I just got closer to God. It just happened just from that one meeting in my heart. Um, and I remember I would come into my living room and I would worship. I didn't realize that I was worshiping. I was just like listening to worship music and crying and singing. But I was also worshiping in that time, just like removing these layers of, you know, spiritual layers of uh, darkness. Every layer was just coming off of me. First it was a depression and then it was the anxiety. And then I remember I stopped feeling, you know, that spirit of lust. Like I was ready to just be celibate and just no communication with anybody and just like get closer to God and try to find out what just happened in my life. My life derailed. Those five years that I gave to the devil, basically, you know, he came, he comes to steal, kill and destroy. And he came to steal those five precious years of my life or more. Probably, I think it was actually from 2012 until 2019, basically. So that's not five years, it's more than that. Um, and just completely derailed my life. Um, I remember feeling so blessed at one point, but you know, the devil cannot, he gives with one hand and then he takes something you need more with his other hand. There is nothing for free. And of course I didn't realize I was worshiping the devil by doing all of these things. I thought that I was just being spiritual, but there are consequences to our actions. I had occult items in my house. I had um, idols in my house. Let's face it, let's call it what it is. Let's call it spade a spade. I had idols all over my home um, and you know without my intentions I did not bring it in my home with intentions but you know the consequences were real um, anyway basically I ended up <laughs> giving my life completely fully to Jesus Christ you know I was like take me please I cannot do it myself I don't know what I was doing and he took me he took me back he was like come on over here girl like what were you doing um, you know, in the Bible it says, you know, those whom I love, I rebuke and I discipline. So be earnest and repent. And that's what I did at those times. I repented for everything. You know, I really truly didn't understand how deep I had gone into the cult, you know, but eventually I fully repented once I, tr when, once I truly uh, read the Bible and I re watched other videos and I realized how deep I was, I really, um, repented and, um, there's another thing that he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And <laughs> that is so very true. Um, but you know, it also says, you know, behold, I give you the authority 
to trample on serpents and scorpions and all over the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you in Luke chapter 10 verse 19. So like once you understand the Bible and the power you have as a Christian, the power you have once you you know, grow that relationship with God. Because being a Christian is not just a word. That's what I thought. I was guilty of it. I thought I got baptized and I was Christian. That's all I needed to do. And it's actually very dangerous when you um, have one foot in one religion and another foot, um, another foot in the cult. Because you no longer as a Christian have the full armor that God has blessed you with once you abide by his laws and you have that relationship with him. Not, not only are you dabbling in the cult, which is already a, a really a sin and a curse, but <laughs> you're allowing the enemy to have full access to you, your life, your children's life, you know, your love, um, your home, your school, your work. And more importantly, your mind and your emotions, because that's what truly happens that these demons, demons, Yes, demons and spirits are the things that we are fighting. And you've been fighting it. A lot of people, honestly, have been fighting it since birth. And once you truly understand, um, the more you get deeper into understanding that God has given us all the tools we need to, um, you know, be successful in this life, you know, our spirit is eternal. So at least in this flesh and blood, the, you know, once you understand the power and authority that you have as a Christian, you life becomes a lot easier but you know the more you know sometimes i remember when i was learning more about the spiritual world i kind of was afraid because i realized how much of myself i had exposed to curses and um you know abuse from um satanic forces and it really made me so afraid because i understood that if i would have died at that time i would have went to hell and hell sounds horrible and yeah, this is from somebody, as I said, I didn't believe in hell. And <laughs> um, my fiance, he, um, actually, so yeah, I ended up meeting my fiance in June of last year. Um, once I kind of, as I said, I committed myself completely to God and I prayed to God, got on my knees and I prayed for very specific things. But then I also let, I told God, you know my heart, please find me. You know the person who I'm supposed to share my, my life with on this earth. Um, because human beings are not meant to be alone. I know dating has made it, for me at least, when I was dating with the dating apps, I was just like, you know, swiping kind of takes away from the, the person behind the photo. And a lot of people are just trying not to get hurt. Um, but yeah, regardless, even through all of that mud, I still ended up meeting my fiance. And I, I definitely asked for a God-fearing man who would lead my family. It was very specific prayers that I was giving up. I was praying to God and I told God I will give you my heart. Um, and yes, he did bless me with my fiance, but I still sinned a little bit. I kind of, I was going to church. I kind of stopped going to church. You know, like we started arguing in my home and we were just, we loved each other. We knew we wanted to be together, but there were things in my home that I didn't realize were that I had given legal authority for, you know, demonic forces to roam freely in my home. I didn't know what I did by bringing those um, those things from shrines into my home or I've, I've traveled all over the world, um, Colombia, Thailand, you know, Africa, and I love getting little trinkets and art, um, but you need to understand that everything comes with an energy, including the things that you buy, the things that you buy, you know, at the supermarket, the things that you buy at the mall, um, you have to sanctify your products. It's very <laughs> deep, but you do because um, these forces behind, excuse me, this, these demonic forces um, that have been roaming this earth for millennia, they know all of the rules and they know that they can curse items and you pick it up and you say, oh, this is a beautiful ring. You buy it in, you know, Mexico and you wear it and then, you know, they have legal authority to be, um, to be in your in your head, your your life, your mind, your emotions, um, and I don't find a lot of preachers talking about it. Maybe I don't know. I live in America; it's a lot different. Um, in Africa, I remember going to church, and if you were going to church and your pastor wasn't delivering somebody, it was a dead church. It was a boring church. Sorry. Um, and I remember being a child and watching people get delivered and just thinking, like, what is happening? 
but it was always normal it was like okay yeah she had a demon inside of her you know um, it was part of going to church and um, of course I didn't truly understand and then when I came to church in America it's just non-existent um, and of course the subject just disappeared until quite recently when I began um, when I gave myself completely over to Christ again <laughs> he is so forgiven he like takes you back oh thank you god thank you lord for taking us all back because honestly we don't deserve it and he takes us back every single time as long as we repent and uh voice our sins so god bless you if you have repented or just god bless you because you shall overcome as well um anyway and so um, if you truly want to understand more about spiritual warfare, I suggest you watch Derek Prince. He is a gem. He has a lot of YouTube videos. Um, there's also a man called John Ramirez, who my fiance ended up sending me his video a couple of months ago. And I didn't, I didn't even want to watch it. And I remember thinking, I don't want to mess with this type of spiritual crap and open up a doorway and, you know, things start attacking me. And, I, yeah... That did end up happening, but it wasn't because of his video. Um, but anyway, it was an eye opening. If you don't know, he is John Ramirez. He has a couple of books. He um, was a really high principality in uh, New York. Um, he was a Satan worshiper, a satanic worshiper. Um, his whole family was, and he is now a born again Christian evangelist who is just preaching the, the good word and he has so many books about spiritual warfare which is very important as you walk down your spiritual life i don't know the man i'm not i'm just i'm just saying i read his book one of his books and it was very enlightening but his video is on youtube it has millions of views um it is not so like you must test every spirit because you can't just watch something and say oh yeah this this is fact so once i saw that it kind of got me into watching as much as possible about satanic forces and what they're really doing to us in our lives and i stumbled across another woman named erica makisa she's from um, uganda and her testimony was also mind-blowing it was also very detailed and then I ended up watching a couple of more reading more and I realized that there's a a, tr a trend here there you know there's lots of overlap there's lots of similarities you know when somebody is lying um, you can tell a lie because you know when somebody like in their testimonies it's the same story every single time you know when you're lying you forget your lies you know um, and it's it's really frightening and also enlightening I will say that um, to learn what forces, what other forces that, you know, that are working against you. Cause that's what I realized. Like I have been worshiping the devil indirectly, um, for many years and working for him and working, you know, to spread his message that you don't need God. You could, you could be your own God and just sit there and just will so many things upon yourself. And, um, <laughs> It is a very dangerous, dangerous thing because what it does, the first thing it does, is it brings you the spirit of pride. And we have to remember that the spirit of pride is the first sin against God himself, you know, in, in the heavens um, before we were ever created. And um, it's what basically was the first and only war in heaven was about was when Satan had all of that pride you know, inside of him. And the cousin of pride is rebellion. That's another spirit that comes right inside of you once you are so prideful. Um, and he rebelled and brought all of the, the um, angels that were working underneath him, one third of the angels, and they were casted down. Of course they fought, you know, there was a war and of course they lost. But this is the this is <laughs> the beginning of the end of Satan was that pride, that, that first sin. So it's, these sins are not, light we can't take them lightly um i've learned so much about the music that i was listening to was opening up doors for spiritual attacks i learned about you know the movies i was watching um fornication the sins that i was committing you know thinking you know i'm living today like where we don't take things that seriously and i suffered <laughs> and i'm more than sure if you truly you know meditate on it and you and I'm talking about meditating on a verse, not meditating like um, the other type of meditating. But, you know, I remember saying Jesus meditated, but yeah, he meditated on the word. And that's the meditation I'm talking about. Um, 
the Bible basically says if you know your, your arm is causing you to sin, cut it off. So that's how important, you know, not sinning is. And um, I take the Bible literal. I truly do. Um, I believe that everybody should if you want to go down this path of being a, a Christian. And um, don't only go to church. Read your Bible. Ask questions. And, you know, ask questions to God. Ask God, you know what, God, increase. Can you, you know, tell me if this spirit is of you or not of you? Because a lot of us also have things in our heads telling us things. And it's, it's not of God. It happened to me. It has happened to you. Um, we have to test every spirit and, you know, be faithful with our walk. Because once myself, once I truly committed 100% to God, to Jesus, and I started to speak to my friends about what I've learned, that first night, I got a, a huge spiritual attack. I got attacked. I actually got attacked twice that night. And... Um, it really made me realize that this is very serious, you know? And when I was telling my friend about it, um, about one of the videos I was watching about an ex-Satanist who turned Christian, she and you know, the book that she wrote, she was like, no, no, I don't mess with that. You know, I did that one time. I read a book like that years ago and I woke up and there was something in my, in my room. And yeah, it is, yeah, it, it does happen. It truly does. And it's not to cause fear, but you need to know what you, what it's, What's attacking you? You need to know your enemy in order to defeat your enemy. Your enemy knows you. He knows you since you were born. He knows your mama. He knows your dad. He knows your favorite color. He knows everything about you. So the least we can do as Christians is learn thy enemy. And that's what they are. They are thy enemy, you know? And um, it's okay to acknowledge it, to say you have sinned, and to ask God for the gifts that you need to defeat the enemy you know you need the the spiritual gift of you know to be able to see in the spiritual world you may not physically see but at least sense when something is wrong you know my friend um gave me a book not too long ago and i read the first page and i was like nope <laughs> nope closed it i was like nope this isn't um no this is not scriptural this is demonic and as i said before you know one man cannot serve two masters and i've seen what happens when um you try that you know from a first hand so in december last year right around right before christmas two two days before christmas i did i ended up getting um uh, one of those phone calls from uh, a family member basically saying that my dad had passed away and um, it was crazy because I had just spoke to him, you know, so that's always the story. I spoke to him on the 19th of December and he was just telling me, yeah, you know, I'm good. God is good. He was sending me, you know, daily devotionals every once in a while. And this is from a man who was never really very Christian or religious growing up. So it was nice to see that. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, that thing that happened in my dream also came true where you know, we, I ended up getting five different stories about how he passed and what happened. Um, nobody really gave me a, a complete thorough answer, but the last, the, the, the one that did sound the most complete was, um, my dad was kind of, he was sick off and on. And, you know, even though he lived in America for over 40 years, when he went back home, he went back to the traditional doctors, you know, those are called medicine men, witch doctors, chief doctors. Um, they're all doctors from the cult. Um, many people don't know this, but they are. They are not getting any type of, all of these herbal doctors back in Africa, that's what they do, you know? And once you set your, your foot in a witch doctor's home, or sometimes they have offices now, apparently, um, you never leave the same, you know? They steal everything from you. And unfortunately, he was a victim. And he, is, the story goes that he went to a different, you know, one of those doctors and it sounds like he got poisoned and then um, basically died. Um, and all of his kids, you know, we found out at different times. Um, and it was really horrifying to live through it and to understand because, you know, as I learned more about like what I have, I had done by dabbling in the cult I realized that that's the same thing my dad did you know like he didn't give his faith to God you know like myself and 
um, the devil came and stole his life. And I see the consequences and it kind of was a really big reality check for me in January this year. And just it just so happens that my fiance, who I was trying to get to come to church uh, for months, you know, it just never really happened. He, I don't know, it just didn't happen in our home. Um, and then one day he came home, I think in January, we had one of our biggest arguments in January. January was a tough month. <laughs> um, and he came home and he told me that one of his friends had called him and basically they spoke on the phone for two hours and the Holy Ghost like entered their conversation and he was like, I, we need to go to church. So we ended up going to church that Sunday and from then on truly started to build our, our relationship with God um, through research, reading the Bible, fasting, praying, became, um, you know, be very prayerful, pray about everything, give God everything fully. You know, we prayed about when we should, even if we should get married, because we realized we never asked God for permission. Basically, you know, you, you want to ask your father for permission if you can get married, right? So, um, and it completely changed our, the whole trajectory of our life. We were building a, a business at that time and that also kept failing and we realize now why <laughs> it was failing. So anyway, just to, you know, to close this, I just want to say, you know, in John chapter 14, verse 6 to 7, you know, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And we need to take that literal. Everybody who is Christian, of course, you know, go through Jesus. Ask him for everything. Ask him if these spirits around you are of him. Ask him if your friends are of him. And you you will notice that when you start asking God for things and he answers you, don't be shocked. I mean, my, my fiance and I, we fast and then we get the answer sometimes the next day or even during the time that we fast and, and we uh, read the Bible. Um, we go through God for everything because we also realize that when you go to the Bible for answers, you know, the devil is never gonna lead you to the Bible. He's not gonna do that, you know? So um, we've learned that that is the best way to get a lot of answers, you know, not necessarily always through our pastors. We were going to a church in our city and we realized that it wasn't as strong as a church as we would like it to be. We want a church that is fully equipped on spiritual warfare, you know, a church that does deliverances and those are kind of hard to come by in, you know, America. But for now, we are very diligent and we are doing a lot of work on our own, just reading the Bible and, you know, watching sermons, watching deliverances, um, learning from you know, our enemies, basically, as well as people who have lived in that kingdom of darkness, um, who have, who had high authority, and we've learned a lot. So, I just want to say, you know, God bless you if you've, <laughs> if you watched the whole video, I really appreciate it, and um, I just want to make more videos about spiritual warfare, because I just don't see enough of it online. Um... But anyway, just to close, you know, I just want to close with another prayer. Um, and I just want to ask God, Heavenly Father, you know, thank you so much for giving me this grace and this ability to speak clearly. And um, to anybody who's watching, Lord, I ask you to bless whoever is watching this video, Lord. I ask you to give them knowledge, to give them patience, to give them grace, and to give them, to increase their faith in you, Lord. I ask you to make sure that they're healthy and they're safe and that the devil has no power over them. Lord, we give you our souls and our hearts and our bodies. Please make us your vessels, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.